Okay, so we're gonna learn a little bit about electricity today. Um, what you need to do is get your science notebook. You should have that with you and something to write with. And um, after you complete the notes, you're gonna use these notes to help you complete the slides that I have assigned. Um, what we write in the notebook will help you. So with electricity, we're talking about circuits. A circuit, the definition is actually a roughly circular line or route or movement that starts and finishes at the same place. And that's exactly what an electrical or electronic circuit does. Um, on this first page, we're gonna talk about two different kind of circuits. So if you could roughly find the halfway place on your page and draw a line. Um, on this page, we're gonna learn about what's called an open circuit. So I'm gonna write that at the top. And then we're gonna learn about what's called a closed circuit. I'm gonna write that on the bottom. Um, these types, two types of circuits can be confusing for fifth graders simply because of their name. Um, normally when we think of something as being open, we think of it as like a, a green light. We can go, like if a store is open, we're able to go into the store and shop. Um, with circuits, it runs a little differently. And I like to use the example of a drawbridge. Now, you guys do not remember the old bridges we used to have here in West Point, but some of your parents and definitely your grandparents might remember. Um, in West Point, we used to have two very short bridges. And when large boats would come into the mill and barges and tugboats, um, they would have to open the bridge to allow those boats to go through and get to the mill or to the granary. Um, when the bridge was open, traffic would stop. Um, this is a huge memory of people who used to live, who have lived in West Point for a long while because the stopped traffic was a problem. You could get stopped over on the New Kent side of the bridge for an hour or more waiting for the bridge to close again so we could go through. The word open here is used in the same way it is with circuits. So we're going to start our drawing with an example of the open circuit as an open bridge and then we're gonna show it as an actual circuit. So, I'm going to draw an oval. I'm not gonna completely go close it though. This oval is representing a road that goes around and around. But here in the middle, there is water going through. Let's say it's a river or a pond. And because we're talking about an open circuit, we're gonna make this an open bridge, just like an open draw bridge. So when the bridge is closed, traffic can flow. When it opens, that traffic has to stop. I'm gonna draw a car here to show that. Um, it kinda looks like a car. All right, so there is a car that had to stop because it reached the open bridge. The bridge is open, so something can go through. Therefore, traffic has to stop. It cannot continue. All right, that's what happens with an open bridge. The same thing happens with an open circuit. Um, if we have an electrical circuit, if I'm gonna draw a second picture over beside it, we usually have some kind of power source. Um, often in science class when we're drawing pictures of circuits, we use batteries as our power source. So there's a battery. And that battery is usually hooked up to something we want to work. We want the electricity to flow through. In this case, we're gonna use a light bulb. Now, just like that bridge would have to be closed for that car to be able to run through, this circuit would have to be able to be completely closed 
in order for that electricity to flow through. We started with the uh, notes with talking about a circuit being a circular line or route or movement that starts and finishes at the same place. Well, if there's not a completely closed circuit, then it can't start at the same place and finish at the same place. So we're gonna make this look like an open circuit. So with an open circuit, that means there's a break in the line somewhere. So I'm gonna draw a wire going from the bottom of the light bulb to one side of the battery. And then I'm gonna draw a picture going, or another wire going from that light bulb and it should go to the other side of the battery if we want it to work, but I'm gonna make it look like that battery disconnected. As a result, notice that is not connected to the battery. In order for it to be a closed circuit, it would have to be connected. It is not connected. And as a result, that light bulb is not working. The electricity is not able to flow or conduct all the way through. It is an open circuit, like an open bridge is gonna start the traffic, an open circuit is going to stop the flow of electricity. If we were in the classroom right now, I would be able to show you how that works with our light in the classroom. Because the light switch that we can magically just flip up to turn the lights down, or on or flip down to turn the lights off, that's actually just opening and closing the circuit. So when we, we flip it up inside that, uh, inside the wall, that is actually disconnecting the circuit so the lights go off. When we flip the switch to turn the lights back on, it's closing the circuit back so the lights will turn on. Okay, so sometimes when we have an open circuit and our lights or what we're trying to use isn't working, sometimes there's a break in it like here. Sometimes it's just a matter of flipping the switch. All right, let's draw a picture of a closed circuit. All right, we're gonna use the bridge example again first. So I'm gonna draw my partial oval, but this time my bridge is going to be closed. Not closed like a store is closed. Remember, we're thinking of this opposite. Closed in that it's not open. Which means if our same little funny looking car was to come and try to drive across, because that bridge is now closed, that means traffic, I'm gonna draw errors to show, can now go around. We have a completely closed circuit, which means that car, the cars can go around and around freely without stopping. Same thing happens with our electrical circuits. All right, I'm gonna start off again with our battery source, our power source. There's our battery. I'm gonna put my light bulb underneath. Okay, we said for this to be a completely so closed circuit, we need a wire that goes from the bottom, the middle part of the light bulb to the one side of the battery, but then we need a second wire that comes around and goes to the other side of the battery. Now we have a closed circuit. So those electrons can now move freely and that power can pass. And as a result of our closed circuit, that light bulb can now shine, okay? Like we said in the classroom, sometimes there could be a switch. Um, I'm gonna draw a little switch over here. Okay, so let's say this is my switch. If we were to flip the switch, that would disconnect the power, If we and it would turn the lights off. If we close the switch, then the electricity could flow and we would have a light bulb. All right, so that is comparing open circuit and closed circuit. I'm hoping you're pausing if you're getting behind. You definitely want these notes because they're going to help you on the slides. That's part of today's assignments. All right, I'd like you to turn the page.
I have two other types of circuits that I would like to teach you about. So if you could once again, divide your page into half, okay? This top half we're going to call series circuit. Box it in so my title shows. The bottom half we're gonna title parallel circuit. Series circuit and parallel circuit. Two other types of circuits we can have. Series and parallel circuits can both be open or closed. That means they could be open so that the electricity has to stop and whatever we're trying to power doesn't work or it might be closed so that the electricity can flow freely. All right, when we have a series circuit, that means there's only one path that the electricity can follow. Um, those of you that, that follow racing, sometimes they have series circuits for race cars where they have a path they go around and around. Series circuit is the same thing for electricity. It doesn't have anything to do with the amount of light bulbs we have. You can have as many light bulbs as you need on a series circuit. So on my series circuit, I'm gonna put three light bulbs. One, two. All right, there's my light bulbs that are kind of looking like balloons. I'm gonna give them a power source. So here's my battery. And again, with a series circuit, that means there's only one path that electricity to can take. For the purpose for us today, I'm gonna to draw both our series and parallel circuits as closed circuits, meaning I want the electricity to be able to flow, I want them to light up. So I'm gonna have a wire that goes from here to this light bulb, which is connected to this light bulb, which is connected to this light bulb, which then connects to the other side, all right? It's taking the long way around, but our wires are all connected, so it is a completely closed circuit. So that electricity is able to go around and around, and as a result, those light bulbs can light up. Now my classroom, um, usually you guys have the benefit of being through many classrooms, and that's not the case this year. Um, in my classroom, I believe in Ms. Blamey's classroom, both of our classes are set up on a series circuit. That means when you walk in my room, even though my room is really big, when you flip the light on, all the lights come on. When you flip the light off, all the lights go off. All right, it's a series circuit. Um, in Ms. Foster's classroom, um, in the cafeteria, in the library, they have a different kind of circuit called a parallel circuit where you can turn on some and turn off others. So it's, um, they have more options. Now with the series circuits, with Christmas just ending, um, the Christmas lights from when I were young, was young, they were on a series circuit. And this was horrible because in a series circuit, because they're all running on the same series, the same path of electricity, if there is a break in the wire anywhere or a break in one of the bulbs, that circuit is opened, it's broken, and it can no longer light up. That means if there is one broken bulb on here, that means all the bulbs are going out. And this was horrible with Christmas lights because when one bulb would go out, they would all go out and we'd spend hours looking at each little bulb, trying to find the bulb that was broken so that we could put a new bulb in and allow our series circuit Christmas lights to start lighting again. Most lights now are on a parallel circuit. We're gonna draw a picture of that next. So go down to the bottom. Um, I'm gonna use three bulbs for my parallel circuit again. But this time, I'm gonna draw them just because it's a little easier to organize one above the other. There's one, two, 
three. All right. So I also need a power source. Um, let me put my power source down here. There's my battery. Okay, again, everything for it to be a closed circuit so everything can light up, everybody, everything has to be connected. So I'm gonna draw a wire going from one end of the battery up to this light bulb, and a wire going from this side of the battery up to the other side of that light bulb. But these guys need to be connected as well. So it has a wire connecting from this side of the bulb over here, from this side of the bulb over here from this side of the bulb over here, from this side of the bulb over here. All right, so what we've drawn a picture of here is a basic parallel circuit. Um, I don't know if you have talked about parallel lines yet in math class. Um, when you did geometry in fourth grade, I believe they've covered it. When you have a parallel lines, you have two or more lines that are going in the same direction and go on and on and on and on without touching. Okay, it's easy to remember because you have those double L's in there. That's what a par parallel lines look like. Parallel circuits do a similar thing. Okay, you can see going through, we almost have a visual of these parallel lines in our parallel circuit. Um, I had to check my phone real quick. It said my battery's almost dead. I think we can make it. So with a series circuit, we said all the lights come on at one time, all the lights go off at one time. In a parallel circuit, you have more options. You could make it so just one light goes on. You could make it so just two lights came on, or just one light was off, or you could make all lights come on at the same time, all lights go off at the same time. You have options. Um, you've probably noticed in the cafeteria where they're able to turn off half the lights. All right, that's because it's on a parallel circuit. Series circuit turns them all off and on at the same time. Parallel lets you turn on a few, turn off a few. You have some options. Now with the Christmas lights we were just talking about, um, it's nice when our modern day Christmas lights are on the parallel circuit because if one of these bulbs go out, the whole tree's not ruined. The other ones can still shine. It's because of parallel circuits, you can also have those fancy trees where sometimes it's showing colored lights, sometimes it's showing white lights. They have them changing colors. They can be blinking. They can have the lights running through really fast. Um, we used to have a Christmas tree where I could change the buttons and change the speed of the blinking lights or which direction they were blinking. Or we could have the lights running through, um, turning on gradually like it was running through a circuit itself. So lots of options with the parallel circuit. Um, again, you're going to work on that Google Slides next. Have your notebook beside you because that's going to help you tremendously. Um, for Friday's work tomorrow, you're going to do some more work with electrical energy as well.